I'll try to run you through um, how the Port Authority is contributing to what the government is doing so far. Let me mention that the government of the day has shown a lot of interest in the ports. And I'm sure because the government knows that it's a critical factor in the development of the economy. The port, the, the port handles about 90% of trade that is coming into our nation. So of course, if you want to develop, then it is just adequate that you pay attention to the ports. And I'm sure you've been hearing a lot of what the government is doing. So I will take my time to, to run you through a few of the policies that the government has undertaken that is also helping the port to grow. Now, I have introduction to Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, and then some activities that the authority is doing to facilitate trade. I would also like to just expose you to the key services that the ports uh, offers to both um, Ghanaians in home and then in the diaspora. Then we'll look at some of the enabling policies that the government has initiated that is helping the port authority to grow. Then we'll look at GPHA's uh, role in all these reforms. And then, of course, we'll have to look at our performance, and that will confirm what we are doing so far. Then I would like to share with you some guidelines for clearance in our port, because you've been bringing some goods through our ports. And then we'll look at some port charges, and then how you benefit from what we are doing. Now, let me tell you that we have two commercial ports in Ghana, Tema and Takrade. We also have two fishing harbors. We have the one in Tema, we have one in Takrade, which is also under Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Then we have fish landing sites. We are supposed to have the mandate over them. Um, we do also have the dry dock. We have one in Tema that has been loaned to Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority to take care of. And the one in Takrade was built by Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. And we also have an office in Burkina Faso, and that is mainly for the transit trade. The focus of Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority is to facilitate trade and then also ensure that there is security in the nation, there is security for your cargo and security for the people who come and do business in the ports. By doing so, we try to uh, provide services in a manner that will reduce costs to the people who use the ports. We also ensure that we uh, provide and foster just-in-time supply chain uh, requirements so that if you are taking your goods through the port uh, to, for industry and all that, you'll be able to make it in good time. And as I said, we also provide security for our nation and the uh, people who bring cargo to our ports. Yeah, these are some of the activities that GPHA provide to facilitate trade. Of course, we invest in infrastructure. We have to build the ports. And uh, let me say here that we are 100% government owned, but we are not government subvented. We generate our own revenue to build the infrastructure and to improve upon the infrastructure in the port. We also um, have innovation in business processes. We always try to improve upon our clearance processes and all the processes in the port. And so we are ISO standard in um, our processes. Then technological readiness. Um, in recent times, I'm sure you have heard of the reforms that the vice president led and we have to come up with systems to be able to flow seamlessly with our clearance process and GPHA was also part of that process. And then we also ensure that uh, the port, we engage the port community because we have a lot of other stakeholders involved in the port activities. We engage them so that we will all be in tune. Now, these are some of the services that the port uh, provides. I don't want to bore you. We have marine services where 
we bet the vessels that come to port, we ensure that we offload the cargo, and then if they have to take some cargo back to where they are coming from, we load the cargo for them to go. We provide other services. When the cargo is in, we store them, and then when you are ready to take delivery, we deliver to you. We also have the fishing ports I've mentioned already. We have uh, some estate management, and then we have a hospital. A hospital, that's out of the ordinary, but we believe that we should um, contribute to the society. So we have a specialized hospital. Let me indicate that these are some of the numerous policies that government is implementing that is having direct effects on the ports. And so our, um, one district, one factory, we believe that it is having direct effects on the ports and then modernization on agriculture. I, I think that the Honorable um, uh, Osei Chairman Sabonsu has mentioned it and the figures that he gave to us as uh, being coming from the modernization of agriculture. And then the government has also tried to uh, facilitate exports. GEPA is doing a whole lot and uh, it is yielding results. I'll be showing you our export figures in a minute and you realize that it is yielding results. We also have uh, government deeply involved in the free zone activities. They are being encouraged and so that's also having effect on our ports. And of course, we have the Ministry for Business Development and that is also bringing a lot of developments and businesses and of course, our ports is enjoying. And then of course, we have um, this Diaspora Affairs Office at the Presidency. And you are here, you, are, you know what you are contributing. And of course, if you are well organized and you are bringing your items to the family and your own items to the ports, we are affected and we are enjoying from that. This is... Um, some of the things that we do at the port that is facilitating the initiatives that I have itemized. And I would like to um, stress the third one, promotion of local content. The government is very interested in promoting local content and we have seen that in the port. Uh, we used to have 10 stevedoring companies, but within the two years, it's been increased to uh, 20 and all these stevedoring companies are local Ghanaians who are doing business in the ports. And then we used to have uh, four shore handlers. Now, sorry, two. Now we have four. These are all local uh, investors, businessmen who are investing in the ports. Let me also say that uh, in Takrade ports, we have a local investor who is from Ghana and is going to build a terminal. In fact, it is the first in the sub-region. We don't even have any local uh, investor who is going to build a terminal, but they, we have one to build a multi-purpose and container terminal. These are some of the issues. If we, if we look at the exports, we, the port is also contributing to uh, realize the dream of the government. And so we are careful we don't uh, increase the prices for exports, the charges for exports. In recent times, we increased our tariff, but we didn't touch exports. And then also, we ensure that um, all the stakeholders that are working in the port, I think I mentioned it, we collaborate with them. We had some meetings with all the stakeholders in the exports area, and then we have provided facilities to encourage export, like the RIFA and the food terminals, and then we give them some rebates and all that just to encourage the government uh, initiatives. Having said all that, uh, this is how our performance is looking. Uh, this graph is showing you how our imports are faring from 2009 to 2018. And if you look at um, from between 2016 to 2018, there's been a difference of uh, about two million um, in cargo that we have handled, two million tons. 
Then we have the exports from 2016 to 2018. Whilst we did 5 million tons in 2016, we are doing 8 million tons in 2018. And this tells you the effects of the policies that the uh, government is undertaking to promote exports. You put the two together, you can see how the graph is going. On the whole, for the two ports in Ghana, we handled uh, 25, 25 25.5 million tons in uh, 2018, in, compared to 19.4 million tons in 2016. This is our graph for our Tema dry dock. And also, this one tells you that from 2016 to 2018, there's been an exponential growth. In 2016, we're handling 24 vessels. They come to the dry dock to repair their vessels. And um, in 2018, we did 34. This is also telling you that there is positive growth. Now, in 2017, um, I think I mentioned in the vice president led the major reform in Ghana, and uh, we titled it the paperless process. It was all about trying to ensure that we um, make the process flow seamless, automate it, make it cost effective, and reduce the cumbersome nature of our clearing process. And that was done and um, it, it's yield, it yielded results. I think that um, GPHA, we also managed to automate our system to the extent that you, the clearing and forwarding agents are in their offices and they are able to request for invoices for service and then we are able to um, generate the invoices automatically for them. They receive it and they make payments and their containers are scheduled for delivery. This reduces the time for delivery. And I think that my colleague from customs will also tell you it increased their revenue. Formerly, we had a lot of agencies go undertaking inspection in our port before your cargo can be cleared. We had about 16 of them, but through the paperless reform, we have three now, and that makes you save time. Uh, the Port Authority also had four uh, security exits. And now, after the implementation, we now have two, which also reduces the time for the exit process. Yeah, of course, we are expanding our ports to be able to take care of the growth in the economy. This is our flagship project. We, um, it's a, uh, a concession with a private operator, and we are building a, a dedicated container terminal that will take 3.5 million 20 equivalent units of containers. And this is going to um, make us one of the biggest in the sub-region. I think that the majority leader said something that um, Currently, the growth rate in our ports are so low and uh, compared to the other ports in the sub-region. One of the uh, reasons is the tariff he talked about us in the charges. But another is that we don't uh, have deep drafts and then bigger place for the big vessels to berth. But with this terminal coming on board, effective 1st of July, we are going to have a bigger draft to be able to receive the big vessels. And the good news is that now that the charges and customs duties have been reduced, we are going to uh, increase the flow. And this, this is um, a picture of the terminal, the container and multipurpose terminal that I spoke to you about being developed by a Ghanaian investor. This is uh, just to highlights the people who are involved in the clearance of cargo in our ports, um, the customers involving uh, all these importers and exporters. We have the freight forwarders who work on behalf of them. We have the shipping lines. We have the port authority and other private terminals. We have customs, and then we have the other regulatory authorities. This is um, the cost of clearing cargo in the ports. 
I wanted to show you the percentage of each agency in the flu and how it's costing us. And this is um, uh, comparing it with Abidjan, Tema, Abidjan, and Lome. And I think that the majority leader said it already, that if you look at ours, um, some of the items, we are far high there, and that is how come uh, government is working to reduce the taxes. Don't worry about this flow. This is the clearing process flow. But you can handle the one to eight even before the cargo arrives in the ports. And this is what I will encourage you to do. Let your agents handle that part before the cargo comes so that the rest of it can go fast. I need to emphasize that if, if you are bringing something to the ports, you need to plan ahead. We have realized that uh, people bring cargo to the port before they are making inquiries about a lot of things. And once that delay takes place, you are likely to pay more at the port than you should do. So you need to find out if whatever you are bringing, like NGOs and all those things, you need to find out if you need special permits, you have to undertake all that before the cargo comes. If you have to um, get a clearing and forwarding agent, we advise that you get it through the various recognized associations. We have a lot of them who are doing all sorts of things. They forge the invoices for the charges for the port and the other agencies. So you need to get a credible um, clearing and forwarding agent. And then you also have to ensure that you know the duty that you have to pay on the cargo that you are bringing. If not, they bring the cargo and some people will say, I didn't know it will cost so much. And then the cargo is delaying. You will be paying a lot of demorage to the shipping line, making it expenses. You pay rent to Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. And that also makes it uh, very expensive. 